It's Dave Fratello with MB Confidential and Edge Real Estate. Just wanted to give you a little update on what's going on in Manhattan Beach real estate these days. But uh, first, let me just say, I, I hope that you and your family and uh, everyone you know is staying safe and healthy in these odd COVID-19 times. I feel like we've been doing the right thing, uh, but uh, it's also been going on for a while and we could all use a little more uh, freedom of movement, uh, freedom of activity, and uh, in this case, we're going to talk about the real estate market as well, but it's all a piece. Uh, so, anyway, I hope you're doing well here at our house. Uh, we've been working, we've been schooling, we've been Zooming, and um, uh, looking for opportunities to exercise. So, uh, probably sounds similar in your home. So, um, today the good news is that the local real estate market is starting to unfreeze. And uh, that's saying something, because we've really seen an extraordinary drop in activity uh, going in line with a lot of the restrictions uh, that have necessarily been placed on uh, market activity. Uh, on the blog today, and I'm going to share the screen here. There we go. On the blog today, uh, I described in some detail uh, what those restrictions are and the fact that we're starting to open. Uh, and it's interesting when you compare, because I talked to a lot of agents uh, in my network that are we work throughout uh, LA County and uh, throughout the Bay Area. And it's been hard for folks in the Bay Area and city of LA specifically. Uh, we haven't had it quite as tough as they have, um, although they are starting to relax their restrictions as well. So that's good news. Let's talk about what restrictions exist now on uh, what would normally be uh, real estate activity. First of all, no open houses, and that makes plenty of sense, of course. Uh, while there is a, a pandemic going on, uh, you don't really want a lot of random people coming into the house. Uh, you don't know if they have it, they don't know if they have it, you don't know if you have it. Uh, it's just not a situation where you want to have a lot of extra people coming in. So that's, that restriction is going to stay in place for some time. Uh, virtual showing options have become really important. Uh, it's, it's kind of vital to have a video tour of a listing that's for sale so to give people a chance to feel it out. And then uh, 3D tours have taken on a new life. Um, that was always kind of a neat add-on uh, that you could have in a listing, but uh, these 3D tours, this is a, this is a listing in Sand Section, 220 16th Street. Um, 3D tours where it's real easy to get a feel for the house, how everything lays out. You can actually cut away. I'm not going to do it here, but you can cut away and see kind of a 3D view, floor plan view, uh, make your way through the house and get a really good picture. Uh, it's better than the static photos. Whoops. <laughs> uh, better than the static photos that we're used to having to work with uh, in a typical online listing. Uh, those things have become really important. Um, then it comes to actual showings. Um, it's been okay to show vacant houses for some time. Um, there are now some new disclosure forms everybody has to sign. Um, kind of tells everybody you're doing this at your own risk and you need to take precautions, you need to wear a mask and gloves um, to protect others. And uh, there are gonna be two potential buyers. They have to be two people who already live in the same house. Same concept there, we're not trying to bring a lot of people from a lot of different places into one place and start sharing whatever we do or don't have. Um, and then similar restrictions apply. Where do we go? There we go. Uh, to owner-occupied houses. I should say this, um, in those other areas I was talking about, the Bay Area and LA City, uh, it has not been permitted to show owner-occupied houses. Uh, even if the seller wanted to show it, they weren't allowed to. If you accepted an offer from someone, you couldn't have the inspector come. The buyer couldn't come after an accepted offer. Nobody could visit an owner-occupied property. And that's been going on for weeks, so that really seized up the market in some of those areas. Those restrictions have been released uh, just this week. And so now everybody's kind of in the same boat. Uh, owner occupied house can be shown. You have to have all those disclosures, the restrictions I talked about for vacant houses. But the seller also needs to go out. And uh, there's a advice that they ought to 
clean up beforehand and disinfect after work on any surfaces uh, that they think are high traffic might have been touched. Buyers are not supposed to touch things when they go in in the first place, but you can't be too careful. You're just, um, if you're going to show it, uh, you want to be as cautious as possible. Tenant occupied properties have been even more restricted and still in LA city, uh, landlord cannot order a tenant to show a property that they want to sell. Uh, normally that's part of your lease conditions that with notice of 24 to 48 hours, they have to allow a showing. Uh, right now in LA city, you can't order that. Uh, and we have similar uh, restrictions in other places. Now there's nothing formal like that applying to Manhattan beach or the beach cities. Uh, but uh, tenants have a lot of rights these days and uh, it's sort of unclear. It's going to be case by case. If you wanted to sell an investment property and you wanted to show it, usually those are uh, sold subject to inspection anyway, meaning you write the offer first and then uh, after the offer is accepted, then you can come in and see it. Uh, but even then, there is some question. It's going to be case by case. MLS rules have been changing and bending a little bit to accommodate the situations uh, that we're talking about here. Um, you cannot list an open house on the MLS these days because there are no open houses and they're not allowed. And uh, there is a status on the MLS called hold, which means uh, you're not showing the property, although it is actively for sale. Um, there are normally some restrictions on that, but now like a time restriction, that's now you could, if you wanted to put your property on hold now, you can pretty much without limitation, without any of the special stipulations you used to have to have. To have. And that's just to accommodate sellers who want to stay on the market, but really don't want to rack up a bunch of extra days on market. And if they have to show it, then you need to switch the status over to active to show you are willing to show it. Uh, but I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on that. Um, Oh, and one other, one other MLS, MLS rule, um, the, those 3D showings that I was uh, showing you a minute ago, 3D showings, virtual tours, video tours, you can put the link of that right into the listing. That usually was not allowed, but they realized that's the only way you can show a house in some cases. So they're letting them put that in the description. So you're probably seeing that when you see properties come up online, you see all of a sudden after the first few words, there's this whole string of characters for the URLs. You normally don't see that, but now you can, uh, at least during the current situation with all these restrictions. And finally, I'd say, um, you know, off-market properties are kind of a big deal now. Those uh, properties on hold, they're kind of on market, they're kind of not. Well, you can call around and, uh, and find out if uh, they're willing to show under certain circumstances, uh, but it's kind of technically an off-market property. They, they don't show up on websites, consumers don't see them. Uh, but there's also quite a bit of activity sort of just below the radar. Uh, it's probably a more of a factor now than it is at a normal time of year. Uh, agents are talking about properties that they may have coming. We have different ways that we share uh, among each other. And uh, for sellers who aren't really sure they want to dive in right now, uh, that's kind of the way they're getting the word out. So if you've got a, a realtor that you're working with, uh, uh, you should be checking in with them. Uh, something I do all the time for my clients, uh, kind of keep apprised of what's on the market, what's coming. And there are some changes coming in that area as well, uh, but that's a whole other kettle of fish and we'll get into that right now. So that's really kind of the update. Um, I will offer to you, because um, this is my favorite subject, um, if you'd like to chat. Uh, about the market, about conditions, you know, if you're thinking of buying or selling, and just, just want to plan out uh, what maybe would work for you uh, in your circumstance, I'd love to help. Um, just send me an email. Uh, it's pretty simple. You know the website, NB Confidential. So it's just my name, Dave, at nbconfidential.com. Just send me an email. I'd love to uh, take the chance to talk to you, meet with you. I can do it on Zoom. I can do it on a phone call. Um, we can meet six feet away uh, with masks and gloves uh, at the property, whatever works, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, no obligation. Uh, I'd love to help. Uh, thanks for checking in on Navy Confidential and uh, thanks for checking out this update. Take care.